Whether it's Anthony Street Close Davis, Lenever plays on back to backs, or the NBA's least reputable quote unquote general manager Rob Palinka, strictly blaming Russell Westbrook and Frank Vogel for the Purple and Gold's 2021 22 collapse, isn't the right way to look at things. After not coming close to living up to anyone's expectations, with a star filled roster expected to win now, failing to even make the play in tournament, in not only basketball's biggest market, but potentially the biggest market in sports. This video shows you every reason for why the star-studded yet miserable LA Lakers are the most disappointing team of all time. Right before that, 90.8% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Eight months ago, after acquiring five former All-Stars in free agency, including a former MVP in Russell Westbrook, BetMGM and DraftKings ranked the Lakers as the second most likely team to win the 2022 NBA title, hilariously right behind Vegas' number one favorite to win it all in the Brooklyn Nets, who've also been incredibly disappointing. But at least Kevin Durant's Nets were good enough to qualify for the play-in tournament, if you try to make the argument that 2012-13's version of the Lakers with Steve Nash, Kobe Bryant, and a prime Dwight Howard, or even 2021's Brooklyn Nets with Harden, Durant, and Kyrie were the most disappointing teams ever, here's why that wouldn't hold up. Firstly, just like the 2022 Nets and unlike the 2022 Lakers, the 12-13 Lakers along with the 2021 Nets were at least able to make the playoffs. That Brooklyn team dealt with a season-ending injury in the second round versus Milwaukee and Kyrie Irving while that Lakers team lost Kobe Bryant before the playoffs even started. For the current LA roster, with an NBA all-time most 57 combined all-star selections, on paper, this looked like the most dominant team in NBA history. And while age was always a concern, we thought Davis and Westbrook still being in the prime of their careers would make up for that, and LeBron James still being himself would as well. No one in their right mind would have placed a bet on this team not even qualifying for the play-in, of course, Russell Westbrook's had his fair share of gaffes, and you could say he's come up short of being the player which Laker fans were so hyped about when they signed a former MVP, but while Westbrook's lack of a consistent deep-range jumper and unrelenting desire to jack up around four triples per game certainly doesn't help, Russ has played the most games by far among LA's top options this season, Westbrook's averaging a solid 18.5 points per game on 44.4% shooting from the field to go along with a valuable 7.4 rebounds and 7.1 assists, albeit on a slightly below average 2.12 assist to turnover ratio. But Westbrook's gotten way too much of the blame for this season, in my personal opinion. The Lakers have bigger problems than just Russ. Clips of Westbrook missing layups got millions of views, which distracted fans from the fact that Russell's 62.3% mark from 0 to 3 feet was 5 points higher than how he shot from that distance during his MVP season. Westbrook also shot 8 percentage points higher from 3 to 10 feet than he did in 2016-17, but most importantly, the man suited up for 22 games more than LeBron James and 38 more than Anthony Davis, regardless of how he played. The main reason why LA's big three of James, Davis, and Westbrook couldn't build up continuity and played merely 21 games together didn't have anything to do with Russ. Westbrook's missed one game the entire year, but the rest of Frank Vogel's roster has been heavily banged up. As put by Bleacher Report's Jake Fisher, Coach Frank Vogel has been a dead man walking since January, but instead of looking back at what he did right and wrong, Everyone's been speculating who's going to take over as the man in charge for 2022-23. Several sources say that if the Philadelphia 76ers falter in the playoffs, Mike D'Antoni could get the call to reunite with executive Daryl Morey and all-star guard James Harden. If so, and as Fisher reported, Doc Rivers could be a viable candidate for the job in LA. Similarly, competing teams expect the Utah Jazz to go in a different direction this summer, making Quinn Snyder potentially available. As Mark Stein wrote in March, Snyder is a probable candidate for the Lakers. In the midst of LA's mediocrity, while I called him Lenever plays on back-to-backs during the intro, the 37-year-old LeBron James was impressive offensively this year when he did play. James could finish with the scoring title if he eclipses Joel Embiid, who holds a 30.4 to 30.3 lead over James in points per game. 
LeBron has one year remaining on his contract, but this summer on August 4th, King James is eligible for an extension. Now the question becomes whether or not GM Rob Palinka believes he can build up a contender after extending James for two more years, which would take him past his 39th birthday at $97.1 million. And the more intriguing question is, would Palinka instead decide to trade LeBron to potentially a team like the Golden State Warriors and get back a young player, maybe like Jonathan Kaminga or Jordan Poole? But we're not going to discuss any more trades because there's been a shocking lack of criticism for the general manager at the helm in Rob Palinka. As put by Harrison Fagan of Lakers SB Nation, it's worth wondering if Palinka's really the man to lead the Lakers back to title contention. It has to be mentioned that he won a title less than two years ago, but given how quickly he led the organization into a full-scale sprint in the other direction, and apparently fundamentally forgot both what made that championship team great and how to make this current core successful following the Westbrook trade, it's fair to consider that the Lakers' 2020 title was more just a factor of lucking into great role players by virtue of the Clutch Sports Agency and the team's scouting department, plus the dual greatness of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, more than it had to do anything with Rob Palenka. The 17-time World Championship winning Los Angeles Lakers, the most famous organization in the history of the National Basketball Association's 75-year history, have 31 wins and 48 losses and have currently lost seven straight games, recently being embarrassingly eliminated from playoff contention. There's no denying they've had a historically underwhelming season. As we mentioned, a big part of the reason for LA's failure to gel together and build chemistry has been constant, predictably repetitive injuries. While the outlandishly hated on Russell Westbrook has missed just one game throughout the entire 2021-22 grind, conversely, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the two leaders of this team, combined to miss 62 games. Speaking on that, the Brow, aka Street Clothes, had this to say after LA's most recent embarrassment, quote, this year, we had more starting lineups than we had wins, and that statement from AD was factually true, as two dozen players wore an LA uniform this season, and Vogel stitched together an insane 39 different starting lineups. It may be unlikely with how LeBron likes to spice things up and make NBA off-seasons almost just as entertaining as the regular season, but perhaps the Los Angeles Lakers will still get to see Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James in action together next season. Westbrook has already expressed interest in running things back, saying, that's the plan, but nothing is promised. You kind of have to take it one day at a time. Like I've said all season long, you've got to play the cards you're dealt. Yes, we want to be able to see what that looks like, what that entails over the course of an 82-game season, but we're not sure if that's guaranteed either, so I just hope we get the chance to be able to do something. Meanwhile, Coach Frank Vogel said this campaign was extremely disappointing, also typically stating that his teams fought hard through injuries, but unfortunately, there's no award for that. Fact of the matter is, healthy or not, this Lakers team simply didn't deserve a shot at the play-in, considering last Friday, with a chance to start a final winning run, a Lakers team with James and Davis both playing took an L to the Zion Williamson-less Pelicans. Then on Sunday, with its season on life support, LA gave up 67 second half points to the Nuggets, a Denver team which displayed they have significantly more heart and hustle than the Lakers. To cap off the badness, albeit without LeBron, who was sitting with the season on the line on Tuesday, a Suns team with nothing to play for utterly ran LA off the court. Should the Lakers fire GM Rob Palinka? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Vivon Daga, who says, I think the Mavericks' dominant skill is how they recover on defense and never give too many wide open looks at the three point line, and their ability to knock down threes and finishing is what makes Dallas a dominant team. Anyways, I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.